So today I'm going to give you my first impressions about Assassin's Creed Nexus. If you didn't know, a couple of weeks ago I made an impressions trailer about the gameplay that had come out. And let's just say I was a bit skeptical. So from there I decided not to consume any more Assassin's Creed Nexus stuff until the game came out. So this is my first impressions of me being able to actually play it. Now similar to other Assassin's Creed games in the franchise, it starts off slow. And I do mean painfully slow. So this is kind of what I was afraid of, is that the game would start off pretty slow. I know it's Assassin's Creed and they throw you into the store and you gotta walk around and stuff, but it's still VR and I really don't want to walk around and do chores and stuff. I just want to be the Assassin. Assassin's Creed games usually also start off very slow traditionally. They throw you into the story, someone's talking to you, you're in and out of the animus, and they also have to show you a ton of tutorial stuff just for Assassin's Creed. Now for Assassin's Creed Nexus, they do all of that, but also have to show you a bunch of VR tutorials as well. Now initiating the Animus Advanced Combat Protocol. Loading professional soldier enemy profile. So in the beginning, you are legitimately in a normal tutorial where they're telling you how to swing, how to climb, how to do well, pretty much everything. And then once that is done, you're finally like, thank goodness, it's time for me to actually play this game and feel like an assassin. However, that is not true because pretty much the next hour of the game is another tutorial. This poor guy. Be assassinated. Did that feel good? Yeah. You see, the game is trying to hide it because you think you're playing part of the story, which of course you are, but it's still showing you how to climb around and duck and, well, swing across things. But I don't want to just dive in and complain about a hundred things. What I do want to talk about is the look and feel of the world. The game looks surprisingly good, especially for a quest game. And I would hope so considering this game is 17 gigabytes to install, which for a quest game is unheard of. But I do have to say the textures and lighting did look very good. I also love going out to a ton of different objects in the game and being able to pick them up and really feel like I'm immersed. I love when games let you open cabinets and pick up all the things, even if they have no purpose, it's so welcome. And I'm very happy and impressed that Assassin's Creed Nexus decided to do that. Being able to pick up dice, put them in a cup, shake them, and roll them just was awesome. And the atmosphere of the different buildings and areas you go into feel really cool. I definitely cannot knock points off for that one because I did feel super happy being inside the world. I just didn't feel happy with all of, well, the dialogue and the pseudo load screens. Ooh, she'll be watching. Scary. I thought she'd never leave. You've heard what she had to say. Now remind me what you want from me. Like, I, I, I don't want to sit through this. Oh, you can skip it. Oh, thank the Lord. Like, as a VR player, because you're standing there while an NPC is talking to you, you really can't do anything else. So your choices are to stand there and get explained to while things are happening, or skip the dialogue, which unfortunately is skipping the story. But that could just be a personal thing. However, when I'm in VR, I need to be doing other things rather than just standing there while an NPC talks at me. But I digress. Now, the thing you'll definitely love doing is taking out your hidden blades. Oh, they don't have collision on this? Come on, at least that collision. You hold the trigger and flick your wrist and it feels awesome. Every single time I have to say it felt awesome to do. But because I'm a stickler, I had to try to do a bunch of different things with it. And I was a little disappointed that the weapons themselves don't have colliders with themselves. I don't know why they don't, like it would be a good feature if they did. But I was surprised to see that you could actually use these in combat. I need to get the stealth kill. Jumping stealth kill! Oh, I missed. Oh, stab, stab, stab. <laughs> At least you can fight with these, that's kind of cool. But I don't want to talk about combat just yet. I want to talk about the movement and the parkour. The interesting thing is that the game gives you a ton of different, well, options to play around. The game gives you a bunch of accessibility features. That way you can play this game even if you don't have VR legs, which is cool. It's inviting a lot more people to be able to experience this. What I appreciated is it asked me if I was familiar with VR. All I had to do was select yes, and then, well, it did pretty much the rest for me. I had full immersion, well, without having to worry about a HUD. So that way if I turn my head, I didn't have to worry about a weird vignette or tunnel vision. So that felt good. And the movement is pretty straight forward. You move with the sticks, you sprint with the left stick, and that's pretty straightforward. You use the bottom grips to climb on things and grab around. And then you hold the A button to go into parkour mode. 
Now, parkour mode is not something I'm totally sold on just yet, but just hear me out on this. I understand that in order to feel like a badass assassin, you can't be missing all these jumps left and right. So the ability to hold down one button as you move the stick and have the character do all the animations, well, is a decent way to accomplish that. However, because this is VR, that quickly took my immersion away. So in a way, I understand why they did it. However, it does take away on my personal immersion of, well, it automatically kind of doing the parkour run for me. And I will say the automatic parkour is not an exact science. If you're familiar with other Assassin's Creed VR games, sometimes, well, the climbing gets in its own way. And well, I have to say it still happens here. I found myself clipping my arms into things and getting stuck when I was supposed to have a smooth, seamless parkour transition, which I guess is to be expected for an Assassin's Creed game. Which just makes me think, if it's going to be pseudo clunky where it's inevitable for it to happen, I'd rather it just be me doing it and not having to rely on holding a button so that the character does it for me. The game does have all the staples though, you're running on rooftops, you're grabbing onto flagpoles and swinging around, and that's pretty cool. And it also has the synchronization. And of course we can't forget the leap of faith. I'll write a leap of faith. I extend my arms and hold a leap of faith. Oh, you don't even auto, uh, I was hoping you'd automatically look down. It's interesting how they did it, but I did expect the camera to automatically rotate when I did a leap of faith, because it really just felt like I fell off a building into a haystack. So now that we've talked about all the movement and parkour, it's time to talk about the combat gameplay. Now, this was something I was very concerned about even before I played the game. To me, it kind of looked like the AI has no brain and they were just swinging and waiting for their turn to die. And so far, that is pretty much what seems to happen. You square up with random guards, and so far they all have pole arms. I do hope that there is some sword combat, I'm pretty sure there is, but everyone I fought so far had a pole or a spear. And it seems like you can only make contact with the blade of their weapon and not like the other parts of the weapon, which is odd. And for the most part, the combat is wait your turn, block, parry, and just wiggle your sword until they die. You can weaken them and use your hidden blade while in combat, but you can't just go for a one-shot kill right off the bat. You have to break their guard and stamina enough, and then you do like a hidden blade, like attack where you lunge forward. It's definitely interesting and it's there to keep the game balanced, but because I have to wait to do it since it's a skill, I still didn't really feel immersed when I'm doing it. It felt like the game was doing it for me and I just stuck my arm out. You can block and parry and then go for a repost. However, it only seems to be like in that order. So the combat is not too creative and free form. You're pretty much sticking with, well, rock, paper, scissors until you win. So if you're a fan of games like Until You Fall, this might feel like a good combat for you, but for me, that doesn't cut it. I wanna be able to attack one guard in free form and hit him in the leg and push him over, finish him when he's on the ground and start attacking the other guy and do more than one-on-one. -on -one. Weeks without being paid. Is he, Shut your mouth, is he aware that he's talking to like the same guy? <laughs> I mean, uh, it was about to happen. Now, like I said, this is just my first impressions and playthrough. It is possible that that could happen later in the game, but just by judging how the AI behaves, I doubt it. Now, Assassin's Creed Nexus lets you play as three different assassins, each in their own assassin world and time period. So far, I experienced the game playing as Ezio, and moving about all across Italy was pretty cool. I'm interested to see how the other two assassins play, especially playing as Connor. Messing around in Boston seems like it's gonna be fun. Now, the levels themselves are instance-based, and here's what I mean. You can explore all across that particular level at any time. So yes, the level itself is open world, but the game is not open world. Once you complete a memory sequence, well, you're done, it pulls you out, and you go back to an operator view. Now, to me, I really wish they didn't include that weird hacker operator thing. It just kind of seems like they're padding the game because it has to be in there in order to explain what the Animus is and give you an overall high concept objective for why you're playing. But to me, I've never really been a fan of out of Animus stuff while playing any Assassin's Creed. So me personally, I wish that whole thing was cut and you were just jumping in and out of different Assassins. See, I knew this was coming, like the outside of VR stuff to do, so. Currently, overall, I'm having an okay amount of fun. However, I do have to say it feels like mediocre fun. Like I'm only going to be able to play this game once. And the game is $40. The exploration is cool, and the world definitely feels a bit lived in, and I love that you can interact with objects, although there were some questionable things that happened sometimes. Give me that. 
This is my job now. I'm sweeping. Where are you going with that? <laughs> Look at the handles on it. <laughs> oh, come on. Triple A game. No. Oh, come on. I'm interested to see where the game goes, but more importantly, where the gameplay goes. I found Claudia sitting at a desk. I don't want to hear what you say. Can we skip this interaction? But so far, from an innovation standpoint, from what a AAA studio has done with VR, I can't see what this game is accomplishing that no other game has done before it. Other than it being 17 gigabytes on a Quest, running pretty well, and looking good. So I guess that's not fair. They have accomplished that. But as far as the game and the gameplay, I have to give it a mediocre right now. You're bored to tears in the first hour. You play the game, but you can't find Claudia. Where is she? Tell me. What? I'll see how I truly feel once I put more hours and complete the campaign. But right now, I don't truly feel compelled to. I have to say, especially in the beginning, once I got out of the quote unquote tutorial, there was definitely parts where I felt bored and I just wanted to push forward so I can continue and be the next assassin. But that could be my own fault because I'm impatient. Anyway, I just wanted to give you guys my first initial impressions. I don't want to rush a review and say, oh, I had some fun, so it's a 10 out of 10, or I didn't have that much fun, so it's a one out of 10. So I will be making a follow-up to this video to give my final review for Assassin's Creed Nexus once I'm able to complete it. Are you guys Guys playing Assassin's Creed Nexus right now let me know in the comments section down below I want to hear your opinions tell me what you love about it tell me what you maybe don't love about it and wish was a little bit better or tell me that I'm totally wrong down below and while you're down there why not consider subscribing it's free I'm trying to get to 150,000 subscribers by Christmas and I need your help so go ahead and hit the subscribe button but other than that thank you so much for stopping by and watching this video I'm Drifter from downloadable content and I will see you next time Thank you.